Hello, my name is Logan and I'm your host, The Mighty Pirate. In today's episode, I'll be talking about the guns and armaments of the Battletech universe. This will be a basic armory video, and in my next armory video, I'll get into some of the munitions and weapons that occur later in the timeline. In the Battletech universe, all weapons fall into one of three classifications, energy, ballistic, and missile systems. Though most often these are mounted to mechs, weapons can be fielded as battle emplacements, on tank, on aircraft, spacecraft, and even infantry if they have the right gear equipped. As I mentioned in an earlier video, these weapons get hot and is the main reason they are typically not fielded by the thousands at a time. And as always, money is a main factor. It's not cheap to make these weapons and it's not cheap to send them across the galaxy. Another important note is that most of these weapons are modular. What I mean by this is that the factories that manufacture these weapons do not mount them into the mech, tank, aircraft, what have you, but design them to be simply installed into a reactor large enough to power them and move them around. Meaning though each factory is owned by the respective great house, faction, clan, oftentimes surplus shipments go to the highest bidder, but such is the way of things in a time of near endless warfare. So energy weapons are the most common on mechs. This is because the mech's reactor can provide near infinite ammunition. Prior to the year 3050, the weapons table is fairly simple. There are lasers which are classified as small, medium, and large. And then there are variations on the system which can be fired as pulse, which flashes the laser at a very high frequency, which does more damage to its target, but requires a great deal more space to mount upon. Additionally, there are ER lasers, or properly named extended range lasers, which extends the time the laser will fire per burst, which results in a much greater amount of waste heat than its standard or pulse counterparts, while taking up more space and tonnage than the standard laser variants. Finally, there is the particle projector cannon, or PPC. PPCs fire a concentrated stream of protons or ions at a target, causing damage through both thermal and kinetic energy. The lethality of the weapon rivals that of higher caliber autocannons. Just as three shots from a PPC will vaporize two tons of standard military grade armor, targets hit by multiple simultaneous PPCs can also suffer electrical side effects such as overloaded computer systems or targeting sensors. The ion beam which it fires also extends to much farther ranges than the typical autocannon fire. Though PPCs generate large amounts of waste heat, all PPCs are equipped with a filled inhibitor to prevent feedback which damage the firing unit's electrical systems. The inhibitor degrades performance of the weapon at close ranges less than 90 meters. Particularly daring, or reckless as the case may be, warriors have been known to disengage this inhibitor and risk damage to their own machine when the target is at close range. Next is ballistic systems. The main armament of ballistics is the autocannon. They come in various calibers based on designer and factory that made them, but all cannons are auto-loading direct fire ballistic weapons and fire high explosive armor piercing or kinetic rounds at their targets in bursts. To put things simply, to classify an autocannon, they factor each autocannon by how much damage it can do in a single burst, giving the category of AC2, AC5, AC10, and finally AC20. As the damage rating goes up, the effective range goes down, and the greater amount of ammunition it will take to fire a volley at the target. Autocannons produce far less heat than energy weapons, but are considerably bulkier and are dependent on limited stores of ammunition, typically meaning only some of the heaviest machines of war will house them. In a separate category under ballistic weapons is the Gauss Rifle. Introduced in 2590 by Terran scientists, the Gauss Rifle utilizes a series of electromagnets to propel slugs of nickel-iron alloy at extremely high velocities, making it devastating and long-range. Unlike traditional ballistic weapons, the Gauss Rifle does not use combustible propellant, so firing generates very little heat. However, the sheer mass and bulk of the weapon limits its application. Since the Gauss Rifle fires solid metal slugs with neither propellant nor explosive, the Gauss Rifle magazines are not susceptible to ammo explosions. However, if the weapon itself is struck by enemy fire, the capacitators that power the electromagnets will release their stored energy with an effect similar to an ammo explosion. Another weapon that is common that falls into the ballistics category is the 50 caliber machine gun, the quintessential anti-infantry weapon, issuing a stream of bullets at a high rate of fire to cut down opposing soldiers while still being effective at damaging battle mechs. It is a common choice because it's easily available and cheap to produce. Though in the various video games, infantry is not very common, in the Battletech universe it is much cheaper to field infantry than it is to field a battle mech or even tanks. With proper tactics and an insane amount of bravo, a group of infantry can take down the iron giants known as mechs. So the 50 caliber machine gun is the most common tool to deal with those unlucky enough to be on the ground against a battle mech. 
And finally, we have missile systems. Missile systems will fall into two extremely broad categories, that is short-range and long-range missiles. Long-range missiles have an effective range of 1,000 meters, while short-range missiles have a range of 300 to 400 meters. While this may seem extremely short by modern standards, each of these missiles are fired at an extremely high rate of fire. Long-range missiles are fired from racks that go from 5 to 20 at a time, and short-range missiles are 2 to 6 at a time. The short-range missiles have far more potent payload per missile and are used to shred armor on opposing battle mechs, where the long-range missiles are used to provide suppressing fire as well as indirect fire. The main factor that determines the use of all missiles is the targeting system, which is used to get a hold and a lock on the missiles while they are in a flight. There are many systems used, but the most common and sought-after system by missile users is the Artemis IV system. This will conclude my armory video. I want to thank those that subscribed to my channel. It gave me the push I needed to get back into making these lore videos, and you should be seeing more videos from me as the weeks go by. Thanks for watching.